Welcome in everyone, Hogville Net YouTube Live. It is Thursday night, I think. It's been a week. It was a week ago on Thursday that Eric Melsman was formally announced, uh, you know, in the late afternoon as the USC head coach. My, a lot has happened since then. Uh, yesterday was a big day. We know uh, through the weekend it was moving toward a John Calipari to Arkansas. Mega hire. I mean, mega hire. Again, I can't, I can't stress enough. This is the biggest hire in Arkansas Razorback history in any sport. You're, you're, you're talking about a Nate Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame coach who was inducted nearly a decade ago. That's how good this guy's been. So the formal announcement finally came, finally came, made it official uh, yesterday morning, Wednesday morning, and then Cal was off to, to Arkansas, uh, uh, landed at Drake Field in the afternoon. Ceremonial introduction uh, when you looked at Bud Walton Arena, you know, six, 7,000 fans in there yesterday. Uh, so he's introduced as his first press conference. It was really cool to be a part of all that, be there in person for that. You know, I'm in Little Rock, so I was in Fayetteville all day yesterday. Got back really late, early hour morning, morning hours, actually. Uh, and then I've gotten some articles out today and more I'm working on tonight. And, you know, we talked last night. I came on here before I left Fayetteville to come back to Little Rock, and we talked a little bit about the press conference, some of the stuff, the interaction with former players, um, you know, dignitaries, including John Tyson, uh, whose standing ovation that he got was incredible. I mean, absolutely incredible. You know, he turned to the crowd, uh, you know, took his hat off and, you know, kind of basically acknowledged everybody. And he continued to get an ovation, sat down. He was still getting an ovation. And so the two biggest ovations, obviously, were John Calipari and then John Tyson. But it was really, you know, you hear the word surreal. This is one of those, that was one of those moments. And so we did, we talked for about 30 minutes last night when, it, you know, the dust kind of settled and things were calming down and they were breaking everything down uh, from where they'd set the podium up and the stage up on Bud Walton Arena on the floor. And so I was coming to you live from there. We spent about 30 minutes going over some of that. And I'm just going to hit on that a little bit and just briefly tonight before we start really start jumping into what matters most right now, which is recruiting, which is John Calipari's forte, by the way. It's what he's, he's the best to ever do it, man. The best to ever do it. I keep saying that. And so when you're, when you're talking about an unprecedented time of no scholarship players that he inherits, um, he's the guy that can get that turned around, not just get warm bodies with pulses, but we're talking about quality. And we're going to get through some stuff that's kind of shaken out a little bit today, just in terms of some names that have, that are new and popped on the radar. So not wasting a whole lot of time for him. But before we do that, I just kind of want to hit some of the high points again uh, from the press conference, because I thought some of the things that really stood out to me, I was really paying attention to, is this a guy where I can read any chance of reading body language or facial expressions? I wrote an article today about the things that stood out to me most on hogville.net, things that stood out to me most about his answers and some things he talked about. But I was, I sat right in front of him. I mean, directly in front of him in the media room, I was on the front row there and, and really got a good look at him and how he handled things. And I'm telling you, I've always had this, this idea about this guy from watching him with press and in different situations. He's been a lightning rod for a lot of different things in college basketball over the years, going back to the nineties. And he's always just calm. He's a calm customer uh, and, and very deliberative and thoughtful in his messaging, but it, it comes off with swagger, but not arrogance. Sometimes with arrogance when he, when he's wanting to go and go there with it. Um, but he's a guy that didn't, to me, didn't break tempo yesterday. It was just on point. I mentioned that last night. I, I thought it was important to say it again, because part of what I'm looking for is a guy that's maybe got one foot still and his part of his heart left back in Kentucky, at least to acknowledge the fact that it wasn't easy to leave and he wasn't looking. But a great opportunity, a better opportunity for him right now presented itself. Going back to John Tyson, Hunter Juracek, it's a it's on his watch, man. You've got to give him two thumbs up and you know, uh, you, you know, the, the Razorback Medal of Freedom someday when he's <laughs> you know, when they're honoring him. I mean, this is a hire to end all hires. Uh thank you, Kevin. You're the man. Well, I appreciate that. I'm just reading a few comments coming up now. You guys know I'm slow at that. Uh, so, you know, just kind of thinking about a guy that, you know, really to me convinced me that this is where he wants to be. Now, you know, th this is a press conference. Again, this guy is polished. There, there's no, there are no curveballs anybody can throw at him, and he really didn't get any. This is a love fest kind of thing, but he did have some questions. You know, he was asked some questions about what brought him here, you know, what, you know, what, 
how you know what is his level of confidence and in, in his opportunities here. First thing I asked him was, can you do you see this as another your, your four? It's his fourth destination, by the way. UMass, Memphis, Kentucky. The last fifteen years, nineties, two thousands, and then the last two, fifteen years at Kentucky. Uh, and he took every program he's been to to a Final Four. I said, what is it about Arkansas? Because we know what you bring to the table. What is it about Arkansas that you see that gives you a pathway to doing it again, making it four schools to go to Final Fours? And he hasn't been there in a while at Kentucky. And he was very, and he forthright. Five minutes he spent on it, he talked about, it's not just about the coach, but it's about administrations and their seriousness about winning. What he's talking about there is the, is just the power play to get him putting enough money on the table, not only to secure him, but to also, he's talking about NIL there. Now, Hunter Juracek brought up that, that he didn't want people to take for granted that Arkansas had enough NIL money. He wants everybody on board. Well, that's what his job is to do. He's supposed to push for that. And the best time, one of the best times you could do that is, is when you brought a, a Hall of Fame coach in and said, look who we just added here. Look who we just hired. We're, we're not playing around at Arkansas. This is serious stuff. Get on board. So it's a perfect time to send that messaging. But when I hear Colin Perry talking about an admi administration's being serious about winning and winning big, do you think that guy at 65 is going to leave a the bluest of blue bloods in Kentucky to come to Arkansas just to ride off in the sunset? No. He's getting paid seriously, $35 million over five years, and that's just the base salary. When you, look, when you add everything up, a $1 million bonus on top of that, retention bonuses as he goes along, and then, in, and then incentives for postseason success can get him around forty million. That was my original reporting earlier in the week. To you know, roughly forty million. There's a pathway there. But what we're also hearing when he talks about administrations being committed, he's talking about NIL. He didn't give us specifics. I've heard between five, six million dollars. That number I've heard has grown to potentially a seven million dollar deal. That would put Arkansas front and center. Put Arkansas really, in my opinion, based on numbers I've seen for NIL and college basketball at the top of the heap. Now, it's going to be an, a continuing situation where, uh, you, you know, everybody wants to have what the Joneses have, right, trying to keep up. And so that'll be one of those situations where today it sounds like the best in college basketball, if true, uh, but other programs are going to step up. You know, Kentucky will, Kansas. I can go down the list of schools that are going to step up. But Arkansas is now a major player if those numbers are accurate. And I think John Calipari was talking about that when he talking about that when he's talking about the serious of at administrations at winning a championship. He's right. A coach is only a part of the process. Even a great coach in this day and age, where you've got to have money on the table now, these are effectively pro players when you look at it from that perspective, and it's a game changer. You're talking about the best recruiter in the business who understands where we are right now because I think he helped pioneer it by being a player first guy. He talked about that last night. That really stands out to me because I've always noticed and seen that in him. Whatever team success he's had, it always starts with players playing to their strengths, doing what's best for them and trying to help them get to the next level. Being a bridge from going from high school to, to spending that one year, that one and done year somewhere, getting exposure at the highest levels, getting developed, but also preparing them for all the minutia of things about being a pro that helps guys get to that second and third contract. It's not always about talent uh, and, and being an alpha. There's a lot of stuff that goes into being a teammate. He talked about some of that stuff. So here's a guy that's serious about the process. It is about players, and he's going to be a guy now, as good as Arkansas's recruiting has been at, at times in the last five years, with Eric Melsman getting a back-to-back -back Elite Eights followed by a Sweet 16, Here's a guy that consistently turns it out. When your roster is at zero scholarships, it's even more important to have a visionary and a guy that can back it up. That's what John Calipari is. So some of the things that stood out in the press conference lead back to the job at hand, which is a steep climb, it seems, would be for most. And, and it's not going to be easy, but I think some of it might be easier than we realize. Look, I had, I had uh, uh, you know, when you're in that building last night around some of the folks that were in there, uh, you know, I had folks coming up to me talking about, you know, maybe they know something, uh, but I heard anywhere from five to eight players could be on board. Five to eight new players could be on board by the end of the weekend or moving into early next week, maybe. So we'll see what truth lies there. Uh, but we're going to go through some stuff and go through some names, and there's quite a few already out there in terms of what we already knew and then a couple more popping onto the radar today. 
we're going to get there, some interesting stuff, but I found it very interesting. Calipari talks about being a grinder, about being coming from uh, humble, humble raisings uh, and, and looking forward to being in Arkansas. He, he talked about it as though these are my kind of people and I can't wait to start meeting the people. Uh, and talked about that Friday to Friday, you know, paycheck to paycheck living. That's how I grew up. Thursdays were no fun because that's when you're broke. I mean, a lot of people can relate to that. So as slick as this guy seems, as much as he gets paid, as high profile as his name is, he is a living coaching legend. All of these things are true, but he does what works for him. And that's get in the trenches, build relationships. He talked about that, building trust with players and their families. He's got all of those things. Yeah, Mark Pope. That doesn't surprise me. Just an update for Kentucky uh, after Scott Drew basically said no today. Uh, yeah, you know uh, Hurley, Danny Hurley at UConn. That's you know on a on a dominant on a dynasty march over there. God, I mean, you know eight eight you know eight and zero in the NCAA tournament, or excuse me, twelve and zero in the NCAA tournament the last two years. Covered in every game, covered the spread in every game, double digit wins in every game. Insane. But he's going to stick with UConn, getting a raise. Um, Mark Pope at BYU, former Kentucky Wildcat back in the day, uh, title winner. Uh, I remember Mark Pope and the player, and he's he's a hell of a coach. So we'll see that that might be a great fit there. Doing a great job at BYU. You know that you no know, in the Big Twelve, so that's not a joke. And had that team ranked former Hog Jackson Robinson, sixth man of the year in that league. Uh, but so we'll see about that. But getting back to Calipari, talking about being that blue collar grinder, and that's who he is at heart. And building those relationships, building trust, putting quality people around him, whether it's players, coaches, and he sees Arkansas as administrative. So he's talking about Arkansas in terms of being a blue blood program. He's talking about how he sees Arkansas as being one of the best jobs in basketball. He talked about Arkansas being a place where he believes he can win a championship. Elsewhere, elsewhile, why would he why would he be here? So all those things are what you I mean. You, you win the press conference. It's hard not to for most guys. Some have felt it. We know that. But he's a guy that you're not. He's not going to miss a beat. He's going to hit everything on point. When the rubber meets the road, and we start seeing how things actually go, I think in recruiting we're going to be blown away by some of it. It's going to continue to be a love fest. Love what you do, Kevin. Keep it up. Yeah. So you know, I, I sound like I'm on a on a on a you know a carnival barker tonight, putting out the message. I sound I sound like the guy's right hand man, right? Uh, but it's him, and it, and it's and it's 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 who he is. And one thing about Kentucky is he's always got players. They're always good. Make of it what you will. Some of the postseason, uh, you know, I'll call them snafus, you know, not living up to expectations uh, and with results. Uh, but but you look at, the, I mean, you look at the guy, six Final Fours, a national title, and keeps his teams ranked for the most part, competitive. Um, and I think at Arkansas, it's a fresh start for him. There may be some new angles for him. He's not going to change who he is. He is who he is at 65, but there'll be new opportunities for him to maybe see things a little bit differently, not just in his process, but how he wants to, you know, how, how he can envision maybe climbing back up to another Final Four with his fourth program. I, I think that's a serious, serious expectation of his, not just the Arkansas fan base that it's going to expect it, not just people who brought him in, but from himself. If he doesn't, the rest of it doesn't matter, and I believed him. I believe that it's important. Okay, we're almost 15 minutes in. I was going to spend about 10 minutes on talking about the, the presser, the opening presser, just some other things I'll just throw in real quick. He said he he, he made a final decision Monday night, let Hunter Yurichek know uh, that he was on board there, talked about the importance of in-state cr- recruiting. He talked about how it starts there, talked about a couple of guys he pulled out of state, Archie Goodwin and then Malik Monk, we know that. Uh, talked about some of the in-state guys in Kentucky. Reed Shepard, a young man I covered a lot uh, in, in the grassroots season, saw play in person, uh, who's going to be off to the NBA draft, very likely, and, and, and the guard, who's going to be a, a first-round pick and likely a lottery pick. Very talented, multi, very multiple-dimensional as, as a lead and combo guard, can facilitate. I thought he really hurt Arkansas in both games because of his ability not only to shoot threes and find ways to score, uh, but he was really loud in the way that he used his dribble drives to get to spots, pull defenders for help, and then find guys on time, on target, as a facilitator, and facilitating good flow and ball movement. Great offense, elite offense for Kentucky this year. He was a big part of it. I understand why. Uh, but he's a Kentucky guy, and he talked about 
you know, zeroing in on the guys that can play in state. And Arkansas has had plenty of those over the years. They have them now. I could go down the list. I could go down the recent list all the way back to the triplets. We're going to talk about some of the names tonight uh, moving forward. And so we're, this is going to be fun. We're going to spend most of our time now that I'm 15 minutes in jumping to recruiting. Now, I've recently talked about uh, – The next step for Razorback basketball, it's a good comment. Yeah, I mean, you know, Eric Mosman did a good, an excellent job here until the final season. Uh, and I think the I think the recruiting was starting to uh, show some serious cracks off the court and all on the off the court, on the court uh, issues this past season. And some of the off the court and some of that stuff was actually just kind of there at times. And they found ways to seal it up and fix it and not let it bust open and have some great success. No program is going to be perfect, but uh, John Calipari, you'll notice uh, his teams. There's not there, there's not a lot of uh, lack of harmony. There might be disjointedness at times on figuring out how to play together. That's with any team, though. That's with any program. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of nonsense. Carter Knox is the name we're going to talk about. That yeah, anything could break. DJ Wagner, big X factor. Carter Knox. Let's go through some of this. Let's start again with the high school players. Um, Let's start with the high school players that were either committed or signed with Kentucky. Six of them, big time names. Three of them, as we do this now, either asked for releases from their national letters of intent, received them, or decommitted if they weren't already signed in the early period. Let's start with Carter Knox, the 6'5 guard, wing, national top 24, McDonald's All-American, a five-star. When you look at his composite top 20 in that, ESPN has him ranked 24th. Uh, but you know, here's, here's an explosive player, a wing, and he's already updated his, IG, his Instagram account, uh, with chicken man. Well, we know John Tyson's the chicken man. I'm assuming that might have something to do with that. I don't know that. Uh, but here's a guy that is thought to be one of the players that will follow Cal to Arkansas. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. By the way, the recruiting dip here, Liam McNeely, we're going to talk about him, um, uh, we're going to get to that, but but Carter Knox is one of those players who on Monday already decommitted, uh, and so we know that he's a guy that we could see come off the board. It's a five star player, one of the one of the three five stars that were McDonald's All American in this class. And let's not forget when when Cal Perry left Memphis back in 2009 uh, to head off to Kentucky, he had three committed players: Demarcus Boogie Cousins, you know that name. Big time college player, big time NBA player, John Wall, <laughs> another NBA All Pro, another big time college player, uh, and Eric Bledsoe. So all those guys were were going to Memphis with him. He got, he leaves for Kentucky, and those guys followed him at Kentucky and helped him build that national championship team, and that really early success in those first three, four, five years where uh, it was incredible over there in Lexington. Uh, but we could see if let's see if three more come off the board. So Carter Knox is one. The highest rated of him is Jaden Quaintance. 6'9". They list him as a center. This guy's a forward center, man. He's got some skill. He'll step out and stretch the floor beyond the arc. He's got a pull-up game. He's a monster when he plays above the rim strong. Uh, explosive athlete. Uh, but national top 10 guy. I think he's eight in the composite rankings. ESPN had him at 14th. But he's the highest rated of these guys. He's one of the three that's asked out of his, in his case, I think he's asked out of his national letter of intent. Uh, but again, a 6'9 forward center. Uh, this guy's a future pro, dynamic player. Carter Knox, future NBA player. Uh, so those are a couple of names. Uh, and then the other one, uh, when we talk about McDonald's All-Americans, 15th ranked, Janelle Boogie Flan, 6'2 guard, uh, who has not, to this point, to my knowledge, ask for a release. If he has, it's not been made public. Some of these guys make it public when they ask for the release. Pay attention to the wording. Words and, and context and comprehension matter. When we if we if when we see some of these reports go out, um, some guys are requesting their release and some guys are waiting until it's been approved and then they're announcing that. And so with, with Fland, I've seen no announcement out, but it doesn't mean he behind the scenes he hasn't asked for a release. Uh, but he's a McDonald's All-American, 15th ranked in the country, according to ESPN player. Uh, another five-star, another guy that can just go get it done. So those are your three McDonald's All-Americans. A couple of those are off the hook with Kentucky right now or have requested to be. Could very much 
could very well be in play for Arkansas. I think Knox, if I had to put a percentage on it, uh, you know, n- not knowing anything for certain or being 100% is probably the most likely. I think Quaintance is probably better than 50-50, just throwing that out there based on stuff I'm hearing. Kevin Knox Foundation, yeah, Carter Knox, uh, the younger brother, Kevin Kevin Knox, who played for uh, Cal, McDowell's All-American, played for Cal at Kentucky, has been in the NBA. He was a lottery pick. He, he's playing in the G League this year, at, uh, but another, you know, <laughs> So he's a guy that in the Cal branch, you know, it was, it's not just Knox coming to play for Cal. It was his brother that did as well. Uh, so acquaintance, I mentioned Flan, um, today, number, uh, ESPN has this guy ranked 46 nationally in the composite. He's number 41. So a high level four star Santo, Santo surreal six ten center, uh, for, with overtime elite. So we know that that's that program. That's a go between from high school to, uh, sometimes straight to the G League. Uh, we've seen Bryson Warren from Little Rock do that. Uh, but some of the players now have been able to maintain their college eligibility going to overtime elite. He's one of them. But he received, he announced, he re- it was announced that he has received his release from his national letter of intent. And he's a guy also I think could very much be in play to follow Calipari to Arkansas. I mean, we're talking about a 240-pound, 6'10 center, uh, and a guy that is just an enforcer in the paint. He's physical, he's strong, uh, and he's one of those paint enforcers. He's just one of those big bodies. And we know over the years, Calipari's front lines have size, athleticism. They're built right. They usually have length uh, and, and big motors. Uh, Calipari's teams, I've, all, I've noticed, are not only outstanding, typically in transition, getting out in transition. In fact, there are times when the, all things being equal, it has been Kentucky's transition game under Cal that that pushes that team over the edge and over the into the winter circle in a lot of games. And one thing I've noticed is a lot of his bigs or even his wings that are taller, six eight, six seven, a lot of length, but their motor, the the systems he runs are getting these guys up and down. And so you start seeing some of these bodies like Quentin, six nine, uh, Cyril, six ten, and these are guys that will bring more to the table under a Calipari coach team than they might in other systems because of their ability to get out and run and all five players on the court doing that. It's amazing to me that that's not talked about as much as how strong his teams have been because he has a collection of talent, size, length, all that. And you expect him maybe to be great on the boards typically, not always, but typically strong offensive glass, overall rebounding dominance. And so that gets talked about a lot because you see all those optics. But what I like is the transition game over the years consistently. Again, not every team is exactly the same that he has. And he says that he, can't, he, 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 you know, he uh, tailors what his teams do based on the personnel. Uh, but a lot of great work and transition over the years and really caught up with Arkansas in a lot of ways. Yeah, a lot, a lot of these. Uh, so Calipari, I mean, we're sitting here talking about John Calipari recruiting at Arkansas. You know, I mean, it's, it's like... I don't even know. It, it would be like, uh, you know, uh, bringing Quentin Tarantino into Arkansas School of Arts and talking about his first projects <laughs> that he's going to do. Here's Quentin Tarantino at Arkansas. You know, uh, I, they do have a drama department up there, I'm sure. They've got some kind of arts program, I'm sure, of some on some level. But it would be something like that. We're talking about an artist. We're talking about the greatest recruiter. of all what those might be. Uh, it looks like my screen's frozen up. I don't know if you guys can hear me. It froze up on my end. That was weird. Um, all right, so we've gone through some of the names. Billy Richmond, 6'6", small forward wing out of Memphis. Um, we're playing number 39 in the country. So top 40 guy, another four-star. Uh, he, he's uh, one of the one of the players that uh, uh, signed on or, or committed uh, we have not heard anything on him. Uh, the same thing with Travis Perry, who's from Kentucky, Eddieville, Kentucky, a 6-1 guard. ESPN ranks him the 71st best player in the country. So we'll see if, if there's a pathway for all six uh, uh, to come to Arkansas. Probably, I, I think I'd be surprised if all six, maybe four or five, maybe all six, but I would I would say, you know, anywhere from three to five uh, would be the, probably the most likely range. You're saying, well, that's pretty much... You can't miss there. Well, I'm guessing. I'm guessing a little bit. So I'm trying to figure out how many they get. How many of these guys are coming? There may be a pathway for all six, but I would guess somewhere between three and five. And 
and now you've got one of the best high school recruiting classes in the country, such as the case while he's, while these guys are with committed or signed with Kentucky as Cal is the head coach there. And you have to remember, Cal's recruiting at Kentucky is going to be a little bit different than it is at Arkansas just right now because he's recruiting based on what Kentucky, what he thinks he's bringing back and going to have there. He's got to replace 13 scholarships now. Six players out of the high school class that he had, if he got all of them, that'd be almost half of it. That'd be half your deal there. So I'm not going to go there and predict that many. Again, I think it'd be somewhere between three and five. Gives you a range there, but I think it's more than two. Uh, and you've got three McDonald's All-Americans in there, and you've got five guys ranked in the national uh, top 50. That's big time. That's a huge – I mean, you are basically got an argument for the best co class in college basketball because you hired John Calipari away from Kentucky and you start splashing again. I was told, uh, you know, at, at the at the ceremony by, you know, a couple of different folks coming around and, and chatting with me, getting in my ear, making a point to talk to me, telling me anywhere from five to eight players could be off the board in the next few days. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it takes any longer than that. Calipari was asked about his staff. He hasn't talked about it. I was told he could bring as many as six staffers with him that he, they, that, that might be in play, that that a source told me that as many as six. What does that mean? You can have five assistants, three can travel. You've got other guys that are important. Your, your director of basketball operations, some other folks behind the scenes. Uh, Arkansas's had those kind of guys when Eric Mulsman is huge, his massive basketball staff. Calipari's going to have it, have his own big staff, and so we'll see what that means. We haven't heard a lot that yet, there yet, but I've got some intel on a couple of things which I find interesting because there's folks working. There's folks working. Kenny Payne to the staff is something that's being talked about. Someone asked me that. Uh, would be, I think, a great addition to this staff uh, coming along with Calipari, if true. Uh, we'll see We'll see where that goes. Um, Orlando Otigua, who's been with been with, with uh, Calipari for a while, a strong recruiter. Uh, one of the staff members has already been informed about Tucker Anderson, the 6'8", 6'9", wing from Bentonville West, who was the freshman of the year in the Atlantic Sun Conference at UCA this past season, led that team in scoring. Big time shooter from three, he's got some craft. Um, so there's already been some, inf some information passed along about him to someone that potentially could be on Calipari staff. We don't have any announcements on that. I, I likely think this will be a person that'll be on the staff. Uh, there's conversations being had. So I just gave you a little nugget. I haven't seen that put out. I haven't tweeted that out anywhere, but Tucker Anderson is now on the radar. We'll see where, if it goes anywhere. We'll see if that becomes a thing or not. Uh, but it's, but it's, his name's been floated to, to a potential staff member for, for John Calipari. All right. So we're, you know, and we know the previous staff, by the way, had several coaches that reach out to Tucker Anderson, um, uh, you know, about the possibility of, of being on board with, with Arkansas and the previous staff. So I've thrown that in there. Uh, and I had an article out, by the way, guys. I've had an article out for a couple of days. I enhanced it this afternoon with some new information. I need to add some more to it when we get off of here. Uh, but I've been talking about the very six players that we talked about in the high school class. The article includes these two players and has included these two players for the last couple of days. Aaron Bradshaw and Adu Thero, both Kentucky Wildcats last year who are in the portal. Bradshaw, the highly rated guy coming out of high school, one of those five-star guys, 7-1 sophomore to be out of New Jersey, three, se three seasons left, 4.9 points, 3.3 rebounds, and only 13.8 minutes per game. Shot over 57% from the field, but only 57% from the free throw line. And, you know, he took 14 threes this year, made four of them, so a seven-foot one guy that can stretch a little bit. Probably not as, as as effective shooting out that far from, but he can face up and knock down some shots. And he knocked down some mid-range shots. I remember in that second game against Arkansas, that track meet, what was it, a 111 and 102? Kentucky won a close game on the CBS national television, but he had 15 points, five rebounds, and an assist in that game. Uh, so he had a good game in that second meeting. Uh, Kevin, curious and interesting Calipari crop picture selection for your main live chat. Clearly, you chose it to be, I mean, that was just one of the photos I have from some of the graphics that were put out. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's interesting about the picture. Tell me, you have to, yeah, we talked about Carter Knox, Payne and Ronnie Brewer. Ronnie Brewer Jr., someone that, you know, that I've put a tweet out, I think it was yesterday, would be a great addition for any staff. 
any college staff, any high major staff, and hope hope I hope he has a pathway here. I'm told that nothing's been decided on that either way. That was a bit earlier. Something could have developed since I last had that conversation, so we'll see. There's another nugget for you. Uh, so we'll see. And anything could be announced or happen tonight, I guess. I mean, we're after 9 o'clock. I came on late for a reason, so I might – so it'd be less of a chance that I'd miss something. Uh, so we've gone through the high school names. Aaron Bradshaw, one of the two players for Kentucky that I'm aware of right now, who's in the portal. I went through his stats. We'll see if he's a, a guy that's a viable option to bring on board. Adu Thero, who I've always liked in his two years at Kentucky. Man, this guy's super long at 6'8". He's a wing. Still has two seasons left. 7.2 points per game, five rebounds, 1.1 assist, 49% field goal shooter, 31.8% from three. That's that's fine. And 80% free throws here. It's a very good player. He's, he's a disruptive guy. I noticed he really gave Arkansas problems using that length in his activity. He's an active guy. And to me, he does things that help you win plays and win basketball games. That's always a key. So both of these guys, Bradshaw, more of a guy in development, more of a, you know, you, know, you see me on hogville.net put article un, under construction all the time, getting ready to pop something. Well, he's a player under construction. I think all players are. I mean, Thero, too, Thero is, too, to some degree, but he's a little bit more known quantity based on what I've seen in terms of what he brings to the floor and applies it to winning kind of consistently. So he's, again, it's still a young player, only two years in. We forget it sometimes with all of Cal's one and dones. He does develop guys and bring them back, and some of them hang around for a while, believe it or not. That happens. All right, so we've talked about two in the portal. DJ Wagner's a name I saw pop up here. No announcement on him. The Wagner family has been part of. It's one of those legacies under Cal. His dad played for Cal. Grandfather, DJ's grandfather, actually played at Louisville. You know, so all those Kentucky ties back in the day when Louisville was, you know, had some great teams. Uh, but DJ Wagner was once upon a time the, the number one player in his class, one of those five-star recruits that came in. He had, he had a good, you know, average double figures, had good stuff going on at times. Uh, uh, this past season, uh, but not a guy right, right away projected to be where he thought he might be, I guess, when you look at the NBA draft and where you'd think a guy that was ranked from one to 10, wherever it was that he landed uh, in that class. And so he's a guy that might look and consider getting in the portal. And would he follow Cal to Arkansas? That's another name to throw out there. I do not, I did not include that in my article, by the way, that I've talked about. I really wanted to focus on uh, the, the high school guys, because none of them have ever played at Kentucky. They're not in that program yet, signed or committed. So I feel like it's fair game to talk about them. They're players in the portal. And then some Arkansas players in the portal, I'm going to talk about that. But I didn't talk about guys who haven't made a choice yet. Big Z, the 7-2 forward center, who was a freshman, Visic from Croatia. Interesting player, shot blocker. Has got some soft skills. He can pass. He's got a little game around the basket. I really love his game. It's seven two, uh, but he's a guy that's big on Cal, and we'll see if he would be a guy that might decide to jump in the portal again. And I didn't report on these guys in my article because they're not in a portal situation yet. So I left that speculation out for now. But we're talking about it here. So since I talked about DJ Wagner, I thought I thought I'd bring up another name that w was interesting to me. You know, Dillingham. Reeves is done with his, the score that was a transfer is done with his. He, he's out of eligibility, I believe. But Dillingham, the freshman, star freshman, Reed Shepard, who I talked about, those guys, uh, Edwards, I think those guys are going in the draft. So you, you've got guys moving on. Uh, Trey Mitchell's done. Um, so, uh, you know, running through some of this. And in my article, I've had the same four names for the last, you know, when I updated it. But two days ago when I put it out, I've had – Four names in the portal that are Arkansas players, Caleb Battle, Tremont Mark, uh, Devo Davis, and uh, Layden Blocker. So I think those are four names to keep an eye on. I can give you a little, you know, I can give you a little um, insight that it's my takeaway that that um, that Blocker is going to be open to whoever the new hire was. You got to think he'd be open to this guy and taking a look at that. Will John Calipari... Would he have interest in, in having those conversations and getting Blocker to consider something like that? Um, and so I think Blocker could be in play in terms of paying attention and having maybe some interest in a discussion at looking at it. That's just my take on it. Before the dead period, which ended today, a week-long dead period, to my knowledge, he had not taken any visits anywhere. He'll be able to do that now. Had not seen any list of names really crop up in great detail. Now, I've had SEC schools calling me, multiple 
asking about Caleb Battle, uh, Devo Davis, and and Layden Blocker. For, they're asking for player evals, anything I can give them, covering um, at least two of those guys going back to when they were in eighth grade. I always talk about that because it's true. And so I've got a lot of history uh, being around these players and seeing what they're made of. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, Blocker is one of those guys I kept saying really should have been playing more, had a bigger role, and been part of Arkansas's plans, especially uh, when the season was done. And, and we just didn't see that. But again, let's see if he's in play. I think Devo Davis would listen. It could be, you know, uh, we'll see if, you know, if Calipari, again, it, where is, is there mutual interest? He would be a guy that would have a fifth year to add to his legacy. Is that a great run? And a change of pace might be a great thing. So I'm not trying to telegraph anything that I know. I'm saying I think both of those guys would listen. I believe that, all right? Uh, Caleb Battle, I mean, who knows? But he's a guy that, look what he did at the end of the season. I mean, he hung 30, what was it, 32 points, 32, 34 points in Rupp, eight rebounds, a couple of steals. I mean, you're not going to kick the tires on that guy? You know, Calipari talked about it in the, in the, in the introductory presser. Uh, he was around. Some of these guys that are in the portal were around. I mean, these guys are using the practice facility to, to try to work on their game. It, you know, they're still in school. They got to get their, you know, they got to keep their hours and credits up. They got to finish. And I know sometimes you can work some of that out online, but some of these guys have hung back and are still on campus. So we'll see. Tremont Mark, it's probably been as quiet on him as anybody. Uh, but he was your leading scorer. And, it, you know, if you had a case to make for anybody being the most consistent player, it was him. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if any of those four would would be in any kind of play uh, for John Calipari moving forward. So I've gone through six players from the high school level that were committed or signed with Kentucky, a couple of players in the portal, plus two more that aren't that I've talked about for the first time, and DJ Wagner and Big Z, uh, the 7'2 big man. That, oh, I really like him. So f six out of their high school class, a total of four, two in the portal, two not, but maybe. Uh, so that's 10 players, and then four that we just talked about that are uh, in the portal from Arkansas. Uh, and I'm going to get to some comments a little later. I want to get through these. All right, so but just my simple math, that's 14 names we've gone through so far. Let's jump in on, a, on three more here real quick. Dre Davis, transfer from Seton Hall. 6'6", six, six, wing, 220. So he's really a small forward and could probably play your 3-4 because when I look at his stats, 15 points, nearly six rebounds per game and over a block per game at 6'6 six, six and 220. 49% field goal shooter, 35% from three, 84% from the free throw line. This guy checks a ton of boxes. A lot of schools on him. Arkansas has already contacted him. It's the first contact that we know of, at least publicly announced, out of the transfer portal uh, that, that Calipari has made on the job at Arkansas which I guess officially began yesterday, but yesterday was more about optics and meeting the fan and meeting and doing the meet and greet stuff and the first presser. Who knows what work he might've gotten done behind the scenes before or after or during any of that. But certainly we know now that Dre Davis is a player in the portal out of Seton Hall that Arkansas has reached out to. I, when I look at this guy, when I watched uh, footage on him and I've seen all these guys either in person or in the SEC, but, but some of these guys I don't see as much of uh, like this guy, you know, going back and look at the footage, very impressed, uh, very impressed with with uh, with Dre Davis. So we'll see if that goes anywhere. Again, he's got a list out. Arkansas's on it. Let's move on real quick because I want to I want to get through these next two. Keyshawn Hall, six seven wing, uh, out of George Mason, uh, was a guy before Mussman left was recruiting really hard. He was he was a silent commit, or tried to be a silent commit. I think Arkansas was dragging it out a little bit. Uh, then Mussman moves on to USC. He releases his final four schools today. Uh, that came out this evening, and he's got Arkansas and USC in the final four. And I just retweeted the list, and I retweeted the tweet that had the list, and I said, look, this is a guy Musk was on heavy, made him a priority. Uh, I'm not sure that Arkansas staff or Calipari, the new staff, has had any outreach to him or any contact with him at all. He could just be leaving the logo up on the list because Arkansas – was going to be among his finalists as long as Musselman was here. So just remember that six, seven wing had good numbers, uh, you know, kind of a below the rim lefty kind of player, but effective, uh, got different feedback from coaches in the Atlantic 10 about him, ended up a second team, all league pick. I don't think he finished the last four games, heard some different things about him. And so that was an interesting, to me, it was an interesting fact that Arkansas was close to taking, accepting a commitment, but didn't. 
and was kind of in a sense prioritizing him, trying to get him in for a visit, get all that worked out, had been Zoom meeting with him. Uh, and some of the stuff that I'd heard surprised me a little, little bit, given some of the some of the stuff that Arkansas struggled with last year. Um, and I'm not going to say anything more than that. And certainly if Calipari's recruiting this guy, uh, which I, you know, I, I'm skeptical about that. I'm just not sure. So that's why I put that tweet out. And lastly, but not least, it's the most recent item that I saw uh, coming out the last hour or so. Paul Biancardi, the ESPN recruiting guru over there, Liam McNeely, remember this guy. Uh, now, he's a guy, five-star, big-time shooter, um, incredible talent. Again, he, you know, had committed to Indiana, decommitted. And according to Ben Cardi, he's got a list of schools that includes Arkansas, Bama, Arizona, Kansas, Michigan, uh, State, UConn. And he's going to take visits in late, later on in April after the Jordan Brand Classic on the 21st. Plans to take visits. Arkansas recruited him under Mussman. I got to see this young man play on the grassroots circuit. Uh, just one of the one of the higher IQ guys you'll see with a great shooting touch, but can do a lot of other things. Put the ball in the deck, and he's got size. What is he? Six seven, six six, six seven. Uh, Liam McNeely. So keep an eye on him because he may be in the picture. You know, I was never sure about how serious he was about Arkansas, and he would communicate with me. You know, he liked the offer. He talked about Arkansas, but. You know, that, that never got a whole lot of traction with him, and I never felt like Arkansas was in great shape with him. But he talked about visiting and some other things. But Liam McNeely, man, you're talking about a guy that shoots around 50% from three consistently in, in different high levels of basketball um, and 50% overall from the field, four, fluctuates between 45 to 50% from three, and then 80-plus at the free throw line. And, again, he's a guy that can create for others and, and has some craft in his game beyond being a shooter. Uh, I, like, I like his floor IQ. I like the way that he understands the game, plays off the ball, moves to get open. A lot of things I re to really like about Liam McNeely. And of course, he's a five star, but he's a guy that's on the board. So when we talk about class of 2024 and the sign class that, that Calipari had, he's also now got a five star and he's in play already. So two things, Dre Davis and Liam McNeely, apparently Calipari's making moves already. You would expect that. But a lot of options here. So when I added those three names, Keyson Hall is not really a name, I don't think, to pay attention to here, although he's still got the Arkansas logo as part of his, uh, you know, as part of his final four. I mean, I guess anything's possible. I doubt that. So I'm going to subtract that as a serious thing right now and talking about these other guys. Now we've gone through 16 names total, and you've got 13 scholarships. And, and there's going to be more names come out. I mean, we're just getting started here. Uh, some of this stuff was laid out there for us by what was available. Again, uh, guys that aren't decommitted or, or ask, you know, asking out of letter, letters of intent, we really can't count them as anything uh, other than possibilities, but they've never played at Kentucky. They're not on the roster yet. They haven't moved on to campus yet, and I think it's fair game to talk about them. It's typical to see players wiggle out of those things. It's also typical to guy, for guys to hang around and see who the new hire is. We don't know. We don't know what they'll do there. Same with Bradshaw and Thero. They may look, wait a little bit and see who the new hire is. They're in the portal. A lot of these guys love Cal, man. And they and the, players over the years, I mean, 40 players from Kentucky gone on to the NBA. My goodness. I mean, Arkansas's had a stretch here of putting guys in the league, and it, it's about a, a quarter of that. It's just insane how, how big time this guy is in recruiting. He's the best to ever do it, man. And here we are. Here we are. After the hire, after the splash, after the feel go good, and you get to keep feeling good. Now you don't you don't have to sit back and go bite your nails and go, well, we got him. Now what? This is what this guy does. Everything he's done has been around. He talked about it, starting with players, building building those those building blocks of prioritizing players and what's best for them. It's why he's attracted five star one and duns that are going to go off to the NBA. And it's not just that simple. I used to be one of those who thought in the past, I'll admit it. I know when I'm wrong. In the past, I used to look at this guy and say, you know what? It's a myth that he he helps guys get the NBA because anybody that could just rake in the top level five stars would have the same results. That is not true. The more I've been around guys that came through Arkansas are now in the NBA, the more I've watched their processes, talked to their families, the more over time I've matured in my understanding it takes a lot. It takes like, it's only 450 jobs in the NBA. It takes a lot more than your talent and your measurables and some other things. 
uh, unless you're a superstar, it takes a lot more to be a pro because there's a lot of great players up there and a lot of options. And so you have to do other stuff. And I think Calipari's farm system, I called it that, takes it, it takes all those angles and he teaches them how to be pros. And, and, they, and they get drafted really high and there's a lot of respect for his process by the folks in the NBA that make the, make those decisions. And so it has he has helped players be successful getting to those those other levels. And so the old talking point is not exactly right. There might be a little truth to it, but there's a lot more to it. And I'm not just saying that now because he's Arkansas's coach. It's stuff that I really came around to in these last few years. You know, I know some folks that have had have worked with him going back to his Memphis days, dealing with players and some other things uh, that that they say that. You know, they basically lay it down and say, this is one of the best coaches to ever do anything on the college level because of the understanding how every player wants to get to the next level. And it always starts there with him. And so I've come to respect that even before this hire. Now I get to talk about it because he's the Arkansas Razorbacks head coach. Right. It's not just the biggest things, not just the hire, but it's the money they're putting in. And that's what he touched on. We talked about it earlier when I went back to the press room, some of the things that stood out, Calipari talked about that. It's the it's it's the leadership behind the hire, and and helping make the hire and everything that's going to go with it. He's got to get NIL help, and I think it's going to be th that five to seven million dollar figure per year is insane. That, I mean, that puts Arkansas. I mean, you know, he sees Arkansas as a blue blood program. Those are blue blood dollars. It's basically saying, yeah, we're a blue blood because we say we are. If you go into it with expectations that we're going to be among the best, it's the only chance you have of backing that up and making it happen. And that's what he's talking about. And he's exactly right. And he's a guy that's done it throughout his career. It's not like he got to Kentucky and things started to happen. I mean, he, he put UMass on the map. He took Arkansas behind the woodshed coming off a national championship and a year later in the Sweet 16 on his way to his first Final Four. He's a guy that was controversial. He's been a lightning rod in a lot of different ways with other coaches, some of the stuff that's happened along the way. But his excellence and how great he's been at every stop, is it's undeniable. It is absolutely undeniable. And it's why he's going to have success at Arkansas. I just I believe that, um, and I believe even more based on trying to read him yesterday. The rubber's going to – is a meet in the road already. We've already gone through some of the stuff that's in play. I love talking about recruiting. It's my forte. Anybody that covers basketball in Arkansas, in my opinion, if you're doing it right, you're doing everything you can to get out and see the in-state kids because Arkansas is one of the best in the country at having a pipeline of guys that can actually help your program not just be good, but maybe elite. And it's, again, I go back to the late 70s. It hasn't been great every year, for, you know, going back to the triplets coming all three from, from Arkansas. Uh, but it's, I mean, the names just keep coming at you. And Arkansas's best teams, for the most part, their best teams have been led by Arkansas guys. Calipari's going to be able to recruit from everywhere. But if they can play and they're in this state, he said it last night, it starts there. And so I think if you're covering basketball in Arkansas, understand what's in your backyard. The more you do to understand what's in your backyard, you're going to see what's in your backyard competing against some of the best players in the country. And that's how you learn about those guys. That's how you put eyes on those guys. That's how your perspective grows. And so I didn't mean to get on a soapbox and sound preachy, but there's a there's a reason why trying to understand how coaches think and what they're looking at, the best way to do that is just throw yourself in the trenches and put eyes on these players as soon as you can. Because at some point, they're going to be recruited. And Arkansas is going to rep recruit him. And John Calipari, I'm just going to go through the names. I've already interviewed several players. A couple of nights ago, um, class of 2025 in-state, top 40 player in the country. I think he's going to move up in the rankings. Had an outstanding USA basketball junior national mini camp in Phoenix during Final Four weekend. Um, you know, when we talk Terry on Burgess, 6'9 combo forward. I, I've been talking so much about how Calipari loves those big combo guys that have length and height and athleticism. Burgess brings all of that. Excellent basketball player. 38th ranked in the country right now, four-star. He might end up moving up, uh, but he was back in town just for a couple of days before going back on the road with the Arkansas Hawks 17 under program. On the road today, bus ride, they probably just arrived uh, in Omaha, Nebraska for the first session for Adidas 3 SSB. It's different this year than it's been in recent years. Usually there's two live eval periods in April. No more of that this time around. 
The, there'll be only one live eval, eval period in the spring and that'll be in, in May. And so coaches won't be there. I wish I could have gone because, uh, you know, the coaches won't be out, but I like to hit as much as I can. I wasn't able to go this weekend with the Hawks, uh, but he's going to be competing there. So I got to go to a practice earlier in the week after he got back from Phoenix, but also uh, before getting back on the road and going to Omaha, got a few clips of just some shell work and drill work, but I interviewed him and he can't, he's excited about the Calipari hire. He cannot wait to build the relationship and hear from coach Cal class of 2025, the next cycle. He's a guy that could be in the, in the recruiting crosshairs of, of John Calipari. Jacob Lanier, class of 2026, also had an outstanding showing uh, this past weekend at the same event, Team USA Junior uh, USA Basketball Junior National Mini Camp. Uh, both pl- both players, when you looked at, you know, ESPN's draft guru Giovanni, talking about both guys listing him daily standouts. Other well-known n- names that cover recruiting, Pro Insight, some of the other ones. These guys' names of constant drumbeat for several days of the weekend as top performers. Six six guard. I think he should already be a five star. He's been rated in the top 30. Jacob Lanier, 6'6 guard out of Maumelle. I think he should already be, be, be somewhere around five-star status. I mean, su- s- Silky Smooth can can shoot the ball, has facilitator quality so he can play the one, uh, and he's getting stronger. He's got great length. I mean, he's just he's a smooth operator, man. He's a guy that I think Arkansas is going to take a hard look at. J.J. Andrews, already a five-star in that class of 2026 here at Little Rock Christian Academy. I mean, coaches beat the doors down to get here. Eric Mussman slowed up on it. I'm not going to go back and knock on this guy, but he really did, man. It was one of the things, it was one of the telltale signs out of a ton of sources I had and just knowing the circadia rhythms of how coaching works and recruiting works. But the guy was looking to get pushed through those saloon doors and get out. All right, but but these guys bring coaches. You know, they, they bring coaches into the yard to check them out. So J.J. Andrews, 6'6 wing, explosive, quick, we talked about Terion Burgess, long strider. His three-level craft is just getting better and better. More consistent three-point shooter. Nice pull-up game. I love his reads and two-man game and understanding of when what where too much is too much and getting off the ball, playing off the ball, passing to guys because he gets a lot of attention. You see guys develop and get better and better. And so Arkansas always has high levels of talent. They're going to help some high major. Why not Arkansas? So Calipari, as great as he is, and casting a wide net, he's going to get what he wants. If it's an Arkansas kid, it'll be an Arkansas kid. If it's not, it's not. But there are going to be plenty of options for him and some serious options. You know, left out Isaiah Seeley, top 50 in that 2025 class, 6'5", 6'6", guard up at Springdale, big-time player. Courtney Courtney Mulder, we'll see how serious Arkansas is about him. Some high majors have stepped up. Another guy in northwest Arkansas at Springdale Harbor used to be teammates with Seeley. Aiden Cronister, 6'7", wing at Rogers. Has a lot of high major schools looking at him. Arkansas, under the previous staff, put an offer on him. He's got to get stronger and continue development. But another guy with a pot with some possibilities. So in these, and that's class of 2026, and he's been rated by two four seven sports in the top 30. So you got a lot of guys in the state. You know, I'm going through some of the names, six names right there between 25 and 26, and there's more. There will be more, and it'll continue beyond those just those classes. But those are the ones that are up and coming. It'll be on the radar soon. And so these are, you know, it's it's exciting times at Arkansas because you've got the best recruiter ever and you've got a state that's that's rich with talent. And and sometimes coaches get it, sometimes they don't. There is a bit of a double-edged sword with some of it. Uh, we know in the last couple of recruiting cycles, most men brought in-state guys in, didn't really use them, didn't play them, ran them off, ran them into the portal, whatever. But guys like Isaiah Joe, who was already on the team, but got a lot out of him in his one year there in the opening season when he wasn't hurt, big-time player, went on to the NBA. Moses Moody, the program's first ever one-and-done, a lottery pick, best player, arguably the best player in the SEC, helped fuel that Elite Eight run in the first one under Musselman. Jalen Williams, same story there in terms of Elite Eights, back-to-back, another you know high second-round draft pick. But in-state guys have mattered. Nick Smith Jr., even though he was hurt, and missed nearly 20 games, helped Arkansas be a Sweet 16 team and help them even get to the tournament. Invaluable uh, contributions from him. A lot of fans don't want to acknowledge that. It's absolutely true. Uh, and, was, and was the top player coming out of the country when he came out of high school. So Arkansas kids matter. They always have. And we'll see, you know, going back to Eddie Sutton with the triplets, going back to Nolan Richard with Corliss Williams and, and several others. I mean, 
you know, Mike Anderson, his best teams, Bobby Portis, player of the year in the SEC in a year where Kentucky went undefeated, didn't lose until losing to Wisconsin in the Final Four. What was it? What, what were the Wildcats? 38 and 0? Just marks to the SEC had five or six NBA first round draft picks on that team. I don't remember. I may be exaggerating. I don't think so. But Bobby Portis was the SEC player of the year, second team All American. Little Rock, Daniel Gafford from El Dorado, big time NBA player, having his best season in year five with the Mavs. I mean, it's insane the level of players coming through here. Ronnie Brewer Jr., his dad was a triplet. Stan Hayes, after Ar- help, the, the first time Arkansas finally crawled out of the mud and got to an NCAA tournament, Ronnie Burr Jr. was the best player on that team. Sonny Weems, recruited by Heath. Pelfrey's first year, he took Heath's players and got to the NCAA tournament. Sonny Weems from West Memphis was the best player on that team. I mean, you can't find an era of Arkansas basketball where the most – Joe Johnson, I left his name out. At the end of the Nolan era, my God, that guy's going to be a, Hall, a Naismith Hall of Famer. Sidney Moncrief, one of the triplets here, for, for both he and Joe Johnson from Little Rock, Moncrief from Little Rock Hall, Joe Johnson from Little Rock Central. Those are your, you know, Moncrief already in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Joe Johnson, I think, will get there. Uh, but those were also our camp. So there's not an era of Arkansas basketball where the studs didn't come from this state. There's no reason why that shouldn't continue, even though Cal's a guy that can pull them from anywhere. If they're worthy, he's going to get them. And it's always been good for Arkansas. Don't ever, ever sleep on that. Not ever. And no coach should. No coach is above taking a hard look at that and, and then deciding what's best and how to move forward with it. We're almost an hour in. I get a little bit passionate when I talk about the in-state guys, and it's because I grew up in this state. This is my home. Grew up in the 501. I'm a Little Rock guy. I lived in Northwest Arkansas for, for about eight years. Not that we need to make this all about me, but I know, I know, I'm, I'm entrenched. With, with with the amateur, the, you know, really starting from a young age, the culture of basketball, not only in central Arkansas, other pockets of the state, where, where the development, the understanding of how to do it is really, really good, really, really sound. And then the talent. I mean, I, I talk to coaches all over that say, you, you know, if you, if you clump together two, sometimes three states and take their best players, Arkansas still has better, more players at that level or better that you're looking at for high majors and other levels of division one. That's true. It's absolutely true because I pay attention to it and I go out and see these guys in person. I don't just watch what other people are tweet putting out on Twitter and then talking about it. You see a lot of guys talking recruiting and that's really effectively what they're doing. I'm not trying to be ugly about that, but I, when I talk about it, I like it to come from a place of understanding and, and my opinions are based on things I've actually accumulated over time. And so uh, this recruiting part of it, You've got the master in the house, and it's got me jacked up, man. I'm excited uh, just talking about it. That's probably uh, carrying over here in this. We're getting close to an hour. I didn't want to go over much more than that. We've gone through a lot of these names. We'll see what comes off the board. Again, I've been told as many as five to eight names maybe in the next few days. I expect we'll start getting some answers on staff. Kenny Payne's name's out there. Ronnie Brewer, Jr. I mentioned Orlando Antigua. Antigua. There's other names. I, I, I fully believe Brad Calipari uh, uh, coach's son is going to be on that staff. You know, that that's obvious. He was there for the presser. You know, he's going to be around. Uh, so, you know, we're going to start filling in some blanks pretty quickly. 13 scholarships to go. Um, and that's, you know, you're starting from zero, but really, this is our time, Kevin. Go as long as you want. It is our time. It's late. It's not that, not like I have a bedtime. I've got work to do. I'm, I'm actually going to be putting together I want to. I told you I've talked to some of these players, uh, Jake Lavenier, Terry on Burgess, both excited about this. Can't wait to be recruited by Calipari. I'm going to get their quotes in my article. I'm going to talk a little bit about NIL and, you know, so we're going to move beyond just what it looks like right now on the roster right now and kind of big picture, bigger picture about in-state recruiting NIL. Going to use some of the thoughts Calipari shared uh, during that press conference. So I've got another article coming out. Got a battery of articles already out. One of them today I put out were some of the, my, what the moments and quotes and thoughts Calipari said that stood out the most for me. I, I did an, an update on recruiting to add the new uh, transfer portal, the first one in there with some of these other names we've talked about. I've got to fine tune that and update that one. So we had that. So we've got a lot of content. Uh, and these YouTube lives, uh, YouTube lives, I love them. Uh, you know, I repeat myself. I talk a lot. Uh, but I'd rather get the information out there and beat it to death and leave something on, off. And sometimes I forget stuff or I 
say it a little awkward, but you know, I'm trying to make sure that I cover it. And um, there's nothing I like more than coming on here and sharing with Razorback fans. You know, um, and I had a great re working relationship with Eric Melsman. and got had a, had a lot of um, a lot of one on one with him that that most didn't get that most didn't get for years. Um, and and I was appreciative of that. Uh, but at the same time, I'm here to cover Arkansas Razorback backs basketball, and 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 I want the fan base to understand where their program is and what might be going on. And it was hard for me to report what I did for weeks and that steady drumbeat. Um, and, and, and when I confronted him with it and had a conversation with him about it, uh, there wasn't great pushback. I've talked about that a lot. There just wasn't. He, he didn't have, he had no major issues with the reporting other than I'm sure he didn't really want it out there, but it wasn't due to not being accurate. And so I, I won't go into everything that was said, but I want to make sure that point's clear uh because we can now put that fully to bed i know i brought it back up because we've got a new era now and it's i mean arkansas went from a <laughs> really good coach we'll see he's had great seasons a really good coach who's had great seasons still a small body of work nine years in let's see what what eric melsman does what he's able to accomplish out at usc uh he may end up being a great i don't know the answer to that i wouldn't categorize categorize it that way right now because I think there's, there would need to be more to be done there, but it's possible. Arkansas got one of the greatest of all time. He's on the staff. A, a, a sitting coach he went out and got, got grabbed within a week's time after losing a really good coach, potentially on his way to greatness, and you went out and got one of the greatest of all time. That's not an exaggeration. He's certainly the greatest recruiter ever. He just is. And you, and you can't argue with the resume. And the guy spent time coaching the NBA as a head coach. He's been an assistant coach in the in the pro game, and he, and he's he's been in a, a a ton of mega matchups and won his share of them. Uh, I mean, this so you went from really good to potentially great to one of the greatest and a Hall of Fame coach, and it just just say it over and over again. It, it's surreal because Arkansas's never been in a position to actually land a win like this in in a coaching hire, and had great Hall of Fame coaches that they pulled out of the mid major ranks and just getting really started on building a Hall of Fame resume. Here's a guy that brings a Hall of Fame resume because it says Hall of Fame on it. So it's real. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not a, well, it should be, or it could be, or it probably will be. No, it is, because it already is. And at 65, you know, I guess, again, I go back to listening to everything he said, the rubber meets the road, we get beyond words and expressions and, and how savvy and how just how solid i mean he, he knocked it out of the park man but now we see we're going to start seeing results and i think i i think the recruiting part of it even now when you're down 13 scholarships again it's bears repenting he's going to win this he's going to put together a hell of a squad we'll see how long it takes for guys to acclimate and get it going here's a guy that's done his thing for years and when he's made transitions on the college level you know, you know, early in Memphis, so go back to the Memphis days when he came back from the NBA, when he got out of the NBA after leaving UMass for the NBA, it was not great right out of the gates. He had to build that up. But I think at this point, where he left that and where he got Memphis and then what he's done at Kentucky, I don't think there's going to be that kind of a, well, I've got to really ramp it up. Maybe year one, maybe not. But the recruiting is going to be there. And we're going to see some studs come in here in year one and then we'll see what that looks like when we're talking about how it comes together as a team what that looks like on the court the sec only gets tougher we'll see who kentucky hires but we know nate oates has now planted his flag as an elite coach in college basketball he has he's got alabama who's never been to a final four to a final four this year he's been at the top of the sec um year in and year out when wins a lot of high profile games they schedule like a national program should out of conference we know what bruce pearl pearl is at, at, at auburn and what he was at tennessee we know what rick barnes has been able to do at tennessee we know what chris beard is and just getting started at Ole miss when I mean, you go up and down uh, the league now uh it's a football league well it's also a basketball league and now you're bringing in oklahoma and texas uh, and so uh, in both sports and in baseball it gets even tougher but i think basketball uh, you, Arkansas loses Mussman, who's been outstanding in this league, especially when you look at postseason play and two of those uh, conference runs 
not the last two, but the two before that in the Elite Eight years. But now you, you've, you've upgraded? You've upgraded when the league's getting as tough as it's ever been? You upgraded your... So, th I mean, this is Arkansas saying we're not middle of the pack. We're not standing for that. We're not settling for that. We're not doing that. We're, we're not going there. We're not having that. That's it. That's the, that's the comment. That, that's the statement that was made these last few days, punctuated yesterday... When John Calipari was in Fayetteville, at in Bud Walton Arena, the the Palace of, of Mid America, that's his. That that's his now. He's running shit. You talk about swagger. There's nobody that's got any more in the college game. Nobody. Co Coach K is gone. There's great coaches. Bill Self, yeah. Hurley now, of course. Tom Izzo, yeah. Can go down the list. Mark Few at Gonzaga. There's there's plenty of guys out there that have that have you know proven how th their worthiness. But Calipari is even above those guys because this guy changed the game. He's an innovator because of the recruiting, and he's won at the highest levels everywhere he's been. Yes, one national championship with all the recruiting success, uh, but who's to say he doesn't have one more inning? I wouldn't count that out. I'm not predicting it. I wouldn't count it out. And certainly I wouldn't, I'm thinking a Final Four is his vision and that he sees as a, a viable path being at Arkansas. The commitment to NIL, we're going to keep hearing more and more about. But I think it's incredible. Uh, think we will sweep in Tuscaloosa. What are we talking about now? This is what we deserve. It's time. We will be the standard. I mean, it could be that way. You know, I, this is season one, and I'm not going to pump the brakes on the possibilities, but I will pump the brakes on making grandiose predictions just yet. Let's see. I think the, I think the the recruiting is going to be incredible even right now. Uh, with you know starting from behind because I don't think Calipari's ever starting from behind. Uh, in recruiting, I mean, he's done doing the work. You know, we were talking about Mossman. Doing the work. I came on for a few of these pods, even though I've been reporting, he's trying to go and probably will, you know, uh, then likely would if the right, if, I said he would go if something he wants wanted him. And I could only get up just beyond 50, 50 because I was, some of these were not wanting him, right. That he wanted. So I didn't know how it was going to land, but what I did know and what I wanted to focus on when they, when their season was over was how hard that staff was recruiting for Arkansas while they were still here. And you got guys below Mosman who don't have a say in where he goes. They just got a say in doing the job. Guys like Ronnie Burr Jr. putting out that wide, casting that wide net like they did in the portal, up to or upwards around 80 names before he left. Uh, he had a, one guy committed. Now he's off to USC. He had a couple other guys silent commits. Uh, those kind of things. So I really focused on the recruiting. And what I said was, if he leaves, don't think that that time spent because people were saying, well, if he's recruiting this hard, there's no way he's leaving. I'm like, no, he's doing the job. And if he leaves, the work he's putting in now will benefit him moving on. Well, let's flip that now because we're talking about John Calipari. You don't think that you think that guy stopped recruiting in the last few days? He was recruiting up until he decided to make a change. You, you think he just pumped the brake and, it, and it's, you know, it's start from scratch? Hell no. Hell no. He, he's got guys that he had signed and committed. We're starting to see those guys come off the board now. Half of the signed class wants out of their, you know, they want to look around at minimum, maybe move on. Some of these guys I think are going to follow him. You got, got again, they've got guys in the portal. He's been recruiting the portal. The first name that came out today that Arkansas's contacted under the new regime, the John Calipari era, is Dre Davis, we talked about. Liam McNeely, who just recently dec decommitted the five star in that 2024 class. Arkansas's now on his list. I mentioned the other schools, Bama, Arizona, K Kansas, Michigan State, and UConn. Come on. That's wild. And not that Mussman didn't have some high-level guys, and he got three five-stars. We know that. Incredible recruiting class. Um, but this happened. Th this is shaking out so fast already with some stuff. Uh, it su should surprise nobody. I mean, this is Cal, man. He is the big dog in recruiting. He doesn't win them all, but that's <laughs> – but. <laughs> But he's the best, and so he wins a lot. He wins his share, and he puts guys in the league. And any time you're doing that, you got a head start on what your team might be. You really do, because you got to have them. You got to have studs to to advance and, and have a chance. You do. You you really do if you're a high major. Uh, 
What else have we left off the table? I'm getting close to an, an hour and 10 minutes. What is that? Nearly 70 minutes. I'm eight seconds away from that. Uh, someone saying screw Moss. I, it sounds like they got Pope. Yeah, I mean, Pope. You know that's probably a good hire, and he and he's a guy that's a Kentucky guy. You know, I mean, you 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 have to swing for the fences like Arkansas did and landed. Uh, I mean, you know, it's funny now because Chris Beard would have been a hell of a hire. Uh, some of the other names that came out, you know, uh, one or two of them I, I like. There's not one that I like better than this. Uh, and you know, Beard would have been fine, but I think this one's even better. I do, uh, and only because only because. This is the best recruiter I've, I've ever put, put eyes on in terms of how he does it. And so that's so important. And now the NIL's coming in. Um, I, I just think, you know, I think this is as about as grand slam as you can get on a home run hire. And, buddy, look, you Hunter Juracek, people should acknowledge John Tyson and some of the other people. There's some other folks uh, with influence and money there that are in, in this. He was the biggest and had the relationship, but, but don't, don't, this is on Hunter Juracek's watch. This is his, this is his hire too. This is important. I mean, what did Kyle Perry, the first thing in his answer to me, and I had the first question, I was fortunate to get the first question asked of him after the five or six questions went to Juracek first. I didn't ask the first question on that one, second or third or fourth. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But I got the first shot at Kyle Perry and I asked him, what does it take to be a final four team at Arkansas? What is it about this job? that you see a path to do that again because you've done it every all three stops prior. And the first thing he talked about was reaching out to Kelvin Sampson where Hunter Juracek at Houston was the AD and worked with Hunter, with, with Kelvin Sampson. Who's what? What is Kelvin Sampson? <laughs> He's a Hall of Fame coach. And he talked about how Sampson just raved on about working with Juracek and how he was supportive and, and did what was needed. Uh, so that got him excited. That was one of the things that helps open a door. Give your check credit. This is a home run, a grand slam home run that he also gets credit for. And it adds just a little bit more swagger to those awkward videos. You can see him no other way now. You've got to lump those in and give him credit. He sent a message out, message sent, message received, uh, and, and you had to land it right, and he landed it right. He landed the correct plane, the plane coming from Lexington to Fayetteville. That's the plane Hunter Juracek helped get here, so give him credit. John Tyson, Tyson, absolutely. Maybe the biggest part of it, but who knows? Why does what? Why do we have to divvy up? Who? What percentage of what on this? It, it's applause all the way around for the leadership, and it needs to be seen that way. You know, and again, you know, I saw Hunter uh, around five thirty. I guess about a half hour before things were going to start, he kind of walked out, uh, and we crossed paths and. You know, he's one of those guys, he reminds me a little bit sometimes of my dad. You know, my dad was an ex-Marine, and he was one of those guys, when he shook your hand, he keeps that eye contact on you, you know, and, you know, one of those guys. And Hunter's kind of like that, you know, so I respect that. But I just congratulate him. I said, you know, you, you, you did it, man. Congratulations. Well done. And he, he thanked me for that. But, you know, everybody, everybody involved in this, everybody involved in this, um, has done something that's unprecedented. You've got the greatest coaching hire ever at Arkansas. And so you won that part. Now you want results, of course, of course. But Arkansas's brand right now is 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 up there. It's just up there, man. And everybody knows it. All the national talking heads, they're buzzing over this because they understand as big a name and as blue blood as Kentucky was before Cal, he's helped elevate that in, in some ways because of the way he does things and how he's a player of his first coach, and how he turned it into a, a turnstile of the NBA in a landscape now that's all about promoting players. They can more freely transfer, treat it like free agency. They can get paid now. They're all trying to get to the pro level. It, it, it's all part of that marketing for basketball. And so here's a guy that's gotten it forever. You won the hire. You won it on a national level. And now you want to see what it, where does it go from here? How good can the results be? What do you guys think? Should I should I get my taxes done tonight too? It's almost 10 o'clock. I've got an article to write. Got to get some stuff ready for some maybe stuff that could drop. I'll throw that little teaser out there. Maybe even as soon as tomorrow. Who knows? I don't know if it'll be anything it'll be tomorrow, but maybe. And I need to get my taxes done. I need to get the knocked out. I do my own taxes. 
I'm going to get that knocked out. Thing that won me over with Cal was when he said, I still have a, yeah, he still has a desire to, to win. And he's not going to just get out of a place and go somewhere and say, well, you know, I can still win. I still have a desire to. He went to a place that he believes the measures are in place to do that. He he said it. One guy, a great coach, doesn't matter who it is, it's not enough. You've got to have the right people, the right administration, people that believe what they're saying they want to do, people that not only believe in him, but believe in the other stuff that it takes, and they can actually deliver it. And I is a big part of that. Hit that like button. I don't know what that means. Is Knox the first, maybe? Uh, nobody... Nobody y'all hired Pope. How are you going to get? Oh, someone's on here calling him a car salesman. Well, every coach, all coaches, great, not so great. They have to sell themselves and sell their program. That's how you recruit. It's how you do a lot of things, how you raise money. I mean, you have to, you have to have, there has to be, that's part of it. You know, all coaches, Arkansas just had a, a, a very good one with the social media game and some of the other stuff and the promotion. Uh, John Calipari is one of the best I've seen. I mean, his swagger is real. It is absolutely real. And, you know, seeing it in, from the perspective of, okay, he's our guy now. This is who we're covering now. This is who's running this shit around here now. It, it's like the Godfather, man. I hate to be trite, you know, Italian guy, but it just, it's got that, it's got that swagger and that feel, man. I mean, it's impressive. Um, but that, that salesmanship is part of the job. So, and, and, and Kentucky can look back on 15 years and four final fours and a national championship. I mean, dude, that's uh, how many schools wouldn't, I mean, I know Kentucky's Kentucky, but, um, you know, how many coaches after Rupp ran through a bunch of titles and, and started stacking them up. You had several coaches win them. Patino got, got over the, got over the hump. Tubby Smith in his first year didn't get the job done to, to Kentucky standards. Uh, Billy Gillespie was a mess coming from A&M, and there was an Arkansas flirtation there. He goes to Kentucky. That didn't work out. I mean, to me, Calipari is, is you know, what he's done at Kentucky uh, beyond Rupp, uh, it's, it, it's, I mean, he, he's arguably the best coach they've had there, and the results have been outstanding there. Calhoun was a great coach. Hurley for sure now. Bill Self, Tom Izzo, a lot of guys. I mean, yeah, Tubby's first year. Right, I said it was his first year. He inherited players. That's, there's no doubt about it. That's real. But he still won a national championship. We've seen coaches come in and and screw up a good deal too. Uh, so he pushed the right buttons and figured out how to succeed with it. So you give him credit for that. It counts. You didn't take it away. Um, and I know Tubby Smith. I've, I've talked with him about players in Arkansas when he's moved on to other coach, when he moved on to other coaching opportunities that work Kentucky. Um, and, you know, he's a guy that, that, you know, like a lot of coaches, sometimes being in the right place at the right time, you get an opportunity like Kentucky. And then he made the most of it with, like you said, the guys that he, he inherited for the most part. Um, all right, so we're almost an hour and 20 minutes in. I've probably gone w way over. Uh, Malik Monk was talked about. Yeah, Cal Calipari talked about Malik. There's not a shot that he doesn't like. He can justify it because he can get him off. You know, Malik's got uh, elite hops, and he's one of those guys that he's just gotten better and better uh, in the NBA, and he's living up to a guy that was – you know, at one point in high school, a top five, top ten, five star kind of guy, McDonald's All American. Uh, when I when I covered him in high school, he is a guy, he can get a guy that can get off a shot with guys hanging all over him. He when he gets on a on a streak, man. You know what he had the forty something plus game against North Carolina. I forget how many exactly he scored uh, when he in his one and done year at Kentucky, but he was an electric score, especially when he, he's streaky. But when he gets and now as a pro, he's he's more consistent. And he's a six-man guy at Sacramento who's been a playoff team. Uh, and he's he's one of the best six men in the NBA. So Malik Monk's having a hell of a career uh, and, and starting to back up the promise, uh, you know, coming out of high school and certainly the one season at Kentucky. All right, I am going to wrap things. It's an hour and 20 minutes. I really wanted to keep it an hour. 
Again, I tend to go over, I say these things. Not great at reading the comments. Not the best interactive guy on this stuff. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining me on Hogville Net YouTube Live if we, as we went through really what's been mostly a recruiting update. There's not a lot of traction yet, but we're getting some of the players and names out there. We're really kind of sinking our teeth into some of the possibilities, and there'll be more to come, and we might start seeing names. Just, just dominoes start to fall, and you hear that sound of momentum in recruiting. It, like I said, it could, could happen very soon, maybe as soon as tomorrow. But thank you for joining me. Not predicting tomorrow. I'm saying it may be as soon as tomorrow. Don't hold me to it just yet. But I want to thank you again for joining me on Hogville Net YouTube Live. I want to thank my sponsor, Jose's Bar and Grill in Tawnytown, Doug Allen and the gang. Love them. Until next time, I'll see you then.